The U.S. is waging war on China's Belt and Road Initiative. There has been another terrorist attack on China's uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. This is a economic corridor that runs from the China-Pakistan border in the north. It runs along the western bank of the Indus River, and it terminates in Gwadar Port in Baluchistan province. This is in southwest Pakistan, and it just so happens to border Iran and Afghanistan. And I, I have warned people many times that the U.S. has a very long-running policy of supporting these armed militants. Uh, the idea is to carve off Baluchistan from Pakistan, uh, give the U.S. presence in Afghanistan access to the sea, but also just completely cut off the China-Pakistan economic corridor and permanently stop this very significant leg of the Belt and Road Initiative. Well, we just watched the U.S. Uh, withdraw from Afghanistan in, in a very humiliating manner. But as I've warned people, this could just be them retrenching their position there. Instead of having an open, overt military occupation, instead they're going to run all of these covert terrorist operations. And actually, before they even left, we saw this uptick in instability in Western Pakistan attacking the China-Pakistan economic corridor. So let's just go look at uh, some of these articles. This is from Al Jazeera. This is Qatari state media. This is the, the camera crew that's following the Taliban around in Kabul in Afghanistan. This is August 20th. At least two killed in suicide bombing in southwest Pakistan. Police say two children killed, three wounded in a bomb attack targeting a vehicle carrying Chinese nationals in Gwadar. Now, these are engineers, Chinese engineers. Nine Chinese engineers were killed in a separate attack ju just recently. And right before that, there was a terrorist attack targeting the hotel. The Chinese ambassador to Pakistan was staying at. Luckily, he wasn't at the hotel at the time of the attack, but he had been staying there during his visit. And Al Jazeera's article even mentions these previous attacks, but they don't say who is behind these uh, militants, who are, who's behind these terrorists. It's not a secret. They're, they're deliberately leaving this information out. Let's check out The Guardian. Maybe we'll have more luck there. Maybe they'll tell us who's behind these terrorists. Protests in Pakistan erupt against China's Belt and Road Plan. Demonstrations shut down Gwadar, where Chinese are blamed for lack of water and electricity and threat to local fishing. Now, all of that is a complete lie. And even The Guardian article admits that that is all a complete lie. None of that is true. China is not responsible for any of that. As a matter of fact, if China is able to complete these infrastructure projects, every single one of those problems will be solved. For example, they are literally going to be building a power plant there to power the Godar port area. Uh, as far as water, how would they be building a city and not figure out how to supply it with water? So those two things will definitely be solved once these infrastructure projects are finished. And then as far as a threat to local fishing, these aren't like commercial trawlers. These are local fishermen who are just barely scraping by through very unsustainable fishing practices. If Port and the surrounding city were to be developed, they would have all kinds of much better jobs to go to, make a much better living, uh, just like they've been doing all over China to alleviate uh, poverty. Now, if you go through this, uh, they talk about the suicide bomber killing two children. Uh, they talk about some of the other attacks. They talk about the Baluchistan Liberation Army, which, like other militant groups in the region, accuses Chinese of exploiting Baluchistan's mineral resources uh, and has previously attacked Chinese nationals and the Chinese consulate in Karachi. Now, that's strange because that's exactly what the U.S. State Department accuses China of, exploiting all of its partners. So it's, it's just a little strange how this terrorist organization attacking the Belt and Road Initiative, a dream come true for Washington, is echoing the same excuses that the U.S. State Department makes for trying to corner, contain, and encircle China. And if you're not familiar with how this story ends, I, I will explain it here in just a moment. And it isn't until you get just about halfway through the article, they finally admit China is not to blame for the power and water shortages that have plagued Guadar in recent weeks. 
they say Baluchistan is Pakistan's most undeveloped and most neglected region, which is true. And that's what these infrastructure projects are supposed to help solve, but they can't, they can't solve any problem if every other week the engineers are being murdered by terrorists. The irony here is the US is pretending that they are coming to, to save these people and protect them from China. Uh, they're protecting Baluchistan from the Chinese, but as a matter of fact, it's the Chinese who are going to save Baluchistan. These infrastructure projects are going to solve all of these problems. Uh, they even admit in The Guardian that Ch China is not responsible for the lack of development there. China's trying to develop the region. So you can see what the US does. They accuse China and turn China into the enemy when it is in fact China that is going to solve all these problems. The US is encouraging these armed separatists to try to carve off Balochistan from Pakistan. Who is that going to benefit? Absolutely no one except for Washington. It's going to completely cripple the Belt and Road Initiative through Pakistan, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, and nothing else. The people in Balochistan gain absolutely nothing. Now, you're probably wondering if, if you haven't heard me explain this before, how do we know that the US is behind the, the Baluch terrorists? It's, it's very simple. They have articles like this from 2011 in the National Interest by Selig Harrison. He's one of these corporate funded think tank policymakers. Free Baluchistan to counter Islamism in nuclear Pakistan, the United States should do more to support Baluch insurgents. And this whole notion of fighting Islamism is a smokescreen. The, the whole point is to just block China. And they admit it all the way at the end of the article. So they say, most important, the US should aid the 6 million Baluch insurgents fighting for independence from Pakistan in the face of growing ISI repression. ISI is Pakistan's uh, security services. Pakistan has given China a base at Gwadar in the heart of Baluch territory. So an independent Baluchistan would serve US strategic interests in addition to the immediate goal of countering Islamist forces. So there you have it. The, the countering Islamist forces, these terrorists are blowing up children on the roadside. So they're saving, they're gonna save Baluchistan from Islamists? These people blowing up children? I don't think so. The whole point is to block China's infrastructure projects, to block the Belt and Road Initiative. It goes beyond just op-eds though. This is a House resolution from 2012 expressing the sense of Congress that the people of Balochistan, currently divided between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan, have the right to self-determination and to their own sovereign country. Okay, so there was a House resolution regarding this uh, Balochistan independence. And then this is also from 2012. This was uh, a hearing in front of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, U.S. House of Representatives, I want you to listen to the testimony provided by Ralph Peters. Let's listen. Let us start with the incontrovertible fact, and that is that Balochistan is occupied territory. It never willingly acceded to Pakistan, does not now wish to be part of Pakistan. If a plebiscite or referendum were held tomorrow, it would vote to leave Pakistan, as would every province and territory west of the Indus River. And we will look at this occupied territory of Balochistan specifically, where people who simply yearn for fundamental freedoms, for the right to determine their own future, we must admire their determination to sacrifice everything against enormous odds in Pakistan and Iran, for the simple right to say, I am a Baluch, I will decide my own future. Instead, we face, we support Pakistan, their oppressor, their oppressor, a state that actively supports and arms terrorists and insurgent movements in Afghanistan that kill and maim our own soldiers. 200 years ago, one of our greatest presidents faced a problem. The Barbary pirates refused to let our ships pass in peace. So we paid tribute money to let our goods pass. Thomas Jefferson put a stop to that. Today, we are paying tribute money again, this time to the Pakistani pirates, 
to let our goods pass to Afghanistan. Mr. Chairman, I'm looking for a Thomas Jefferson. So the whole point at that time was to give the U.S. occupation access to the ocean by creating this other client regime in a so-called independent Baluchistan. It was also going to just completely cut the Belt and Road Initiative off there. That would be over permanently. There would be no way China would be able to manage that. That was the whole purpose. Now the U.S. has left Afghanistan in a very humiliating fashion. Uh, some people think that that is the U.S. actually collapsing as an empire. Maybe. Maybe they're retrenching their position so that they can focus more attention on these covert terrorist operations. As a matter of fact, uh, we're watching an uptick in violence in Balochistan, which borders Afghanistan. I think the U.S. was setting up these networks as they were preparing to leave. They were going to end their overt military operations there, and they were going to focus on their covert terrorist sponsoring operations, not just in Balochistan and elsewhere in Western Pakistan, but also Xinjiang, China, Central Asia, and uh, in Eastern Iran. And I think we're going to watch an uptick in attacks as the U.S. leaves Afghanistan, apparently, supposedly permanently. They're going to have all of this added plausible deniability because of the way they left Afghanistan. They will say, we're not even in the region anymore. The Taliban runs Afghanistan. They don't like us. They hate us. How could we be influencing anything inside of Afghanistan? We have nothing to do with these terrorists that just so happen to attack every single country or project that we want to block or destabilize or overthrow. It's just a coincidence. So I'm going to keep going over this. Every time there's one of these attacks, I think it's very important. Um, this is the U.S. waging war on China's Belt and Road Initiative. It is very important to cover these attacks. It's important to raise attention so that every time they happen, everyone points the finger at the U.S. Don't let them say, oh, we're out of Afghanistan. It couldn't be us. It is them. This is what they've been doing for over 10 years now. Uh, they openly supported free Balochistan. They were backing these armed militants, openly uh, calling to support these armed militants. And now these armed militants are attacking the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. They're claiming these militants are protecting the people of Balochistan from China. They are saving Balochistan from China, when in reality it's China and its infrastructure projects that are going to save Balochistan from being a backwater region that isn't even connected to the national grid. They are going to solve that problem, but not if U.S.-sponsored terrorists keep attacking and killing their engineers. So this is a battle between progress and development and empire who knows the only way for them to stay on top is to make sure everyone stays down. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I have a website, newatlas.report. Please go there. All of my videos will be up there. All of my articles are up there. There is no paywall. There will never be a paywall. All of my work is there for free for everybody to, to read, watch, and use. And if I ever get kicked off of YouTube, I can embed videos on the website from other video sharing platforms and you can still uh, watch my work. In the video description below, there are links to all of the, the articles and references that I used. There are also ways you can help support my work to absolutely everyone who is helping me in every way, whether it's uh, by becoming a Patreon member or one-time donations or uh, people just liking and sharing my work. Thank you so much. This would not be possible without that constant support. Uh, thank you so much for that. And as always, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.